What's up, y'all? I'm Andy Story with Poster Grind, your neighborhood art director that designs movie posters for all the major Hollywood studios. Today, I'm going to share with you a really fun technique called the pixel sorting face melt drip. Now, <laughs> it sounds like a lot, but it's really fun to do. I'm going to take you from the beginning where we select the images. I explain which images are going to work best. We're going to distort the images, create the pixel sorting effect, and at the end, blend it all together, create a final piece of artwork, and then sort out a bunch of different color alts so that if you are making something for a client, you can provide them with numerous different options. I'm pretty sure you're going to enjoy this one, so let's dive on in. <laughs> what? All right, y'all, get that Photoshop fired on up. I'm excited for this tutorial. This one's gonna be really, really fun. All we're gonna need is two images in order to make this distorted pixel sorting effect. I picked these two up from Envato.com, which I do like because they have a commercial license. And if you are working commercially for clients, this may be a great option as they have a $200 subscription with unlimited downloads of their stock photography, graphics, typography, video, and even music. But I digress. Let's talk about what we got to do to make some awesome artwork. The first thing is you're going to want to pick out an image, something like this. I like this one because we have a hand up against the face and we're going to mask out the hand so that our distortion goes below the hand and makes a really, really cool piece of artwork. Now, talking about the pixel sorting distortion effect. You're gonna need some an image like this. For some reason, leaves work really well. You can even do people. You could just pick something that is similar that has a lot of contrasting elements. You have some dark and you have some light and you have some dark and you have some light. That's the kind of image that will work for this particular situation. Now, our first order of business is to turn our leaf image into the drippy, sorted, pixel distortion, whatever you want to call it. And assuming that your image, your leaf image is already a smart object, if it's not, turn it into a smart object by right clicking and selecting convert to smart object. If you're there, let's go ahead and hit this, hit this layer twice to take us to what I like to call smart object land, which allows us to edit photography and make save changes and it converts it in our original art piece. But don't worry about that right now. I don't wanna confuse you. From here, all you gotta do is go to this layer and I just like to unclick the locked, the locked layer icon to remove the lock. And then all we gotta do is go up to image and turn this into more of a pixelated smaller image with a lower resolution. And the easiest way to do that is just going up to image over here, image size, hit image size, and then they already have presets, so you don't really have to type in your own number. Usually 1024 or 1366 by 768 will work at 72 PPI. So today I'm just gonna use 1024 by 768, and I'm gonna hit okay. And now it's made our image smaller and more pixelated, and you can zoom in by hitting command plus, and you can see the image is a lot crappier. And that's what we wanted though, because you'll see why. Go up to filter, stylize, wind. Hit wind, and once you get to wind, we're gonna wanna go to not the wind method, but the stagger method. So make sure you're on method stagger, and then the direction left to right, and hit okay. And now, like that, we have this awesome pixelation going on, but that's definitely not enough for what we want to accomplish. So we're going to go back up to filter and hit wind again. And what that does is up in the filter section is it remembers the last command or the last filter command you gave and redoes it. So you can either do this a bunch of times or you can hit the hot key, which is control command F. And that's what I'm going to do to get this party moving along rather quickly. And I'm just gonna hit this, I don't know, maybe 20, 25 times. It's all subjective at this point. So whatever you can stop whenever you think you got enough. And right there, I think I have enough and I like what I'm seeing. So I'm gonna take this image back into our image art by copying it, hit Command C. And then let's go back to our original graphic and hit Command V 
And like that, we have our pixelated, our sorting or whatever you want to call it, good to go. And it looks amazing. So. All right, y'all, I got a little carried away on this tutorial. If you've learned anything up until this point, please hit that like button. I appreciate amazing. it. So that's cool. But what's not cool is we still have this layer or the, the leaf, the leaves that we used. And we can just go ahead and drop that down below to stay organized and remember how we made this, especially if we're working with a client and they want us to make some kind of revs. Now let's go back up to that image and make sure that we increase the size that is going to cover the entire face and the bottom of our artwork. So hit Command T to transform. And then I'm just going to keep my finger down on Shift and Option. And that way we're going to create, we're going to expand equally like such. And once we get it to there, I'm just going to let go of Shift Option and just drag down like so. And now you can toggle on and off to make sure that we've covered our face completely, which we have. And now we can just do the fun part of masking out our image so that it fits over her face and under her hand. And to do that, I'm going to use the pen tool. And if you're new to the pen tool, I highly suggest you check out our tutorial on how to use the pen tool where I swap out an older style gun for a new style gun for a movie poster design. But let's get this monotony out of the way. I'll go ahead and do this and speed it up and you guys can chill and listen to some music. There we go, that looks a lot better. And the only thing we're missing now is her eyeballs. So what we're gonna do is lower the opacity on our pixel layer, Command plus to zoom on in, and now we're just going to mask out her eyes and I'll be using the pen tool. And now I'm going to increase the opacity back to normal and take a look, and it looks pretty cool. But I think what I'm gonna do is we have these really sharp edges around the hair. So I'm gonna get a soft brush and mask out, reduce the sharpness of the edges manually. And then I'm gonna do the same thing around the eyes so that it's a little bit more blendy. So hitting B for brush, I'm gonna put my flow, I don't know, around 14%. And then I'm going to make sure that my hardness is around 14, 20%, somewhere around there. And I'm just gonna go in and paint where I think the little strands of hair would be. All right, so we did a good job of softening up the edges for our mask and now we can basically create a little bit of shadow between the hair and the pixels and an easy and quick way to do that is by going to our exposure adjustment layer and then we're going to crank down that exposure quite a bit and then on that mask we're going to hit command i to invert and then using a brush with painting with white we're just going to brush back in that shadow but let's like that and then i'm going to turn that into its own group by hitting command g and then i'm going to drop our layer mask from the pixel layer onto that group so that we get it all cleaned up and now actually we can go back in and see where we would need more shadow like right in there There we go. And we can even do a brand new layer and then we can paint with black or dark blue and put this layer on multiply. And we'll just paint a little close to the edges just to give it a little bit more layer, one more layer of shadow. And then we're gonna reduce the opacity so it's not too strong, something like that. And since we're working non-destructively, we can always go back and tweak it later. 
But for now, let's play around with the color. We'll try and get rid of that green color. And the easy way to do that is just by going to your hue saturation adjustment layer, and then go ahead and hit colorize. And then on colorize, we can start playing around with the color, but we're gonna wanna use a clipping mask to clip it so that it's only affecting our pixels. To do that, Option, Command G, make sure you're on that layer, and it's going to clip it to the bottom layer, which is our pixel layer. And now we can mess around with the color. So I'm gonna kinda look for something a little more on the blue side, and then maybe pump up the saturation, and you can always play around with the brightness and the darkness like that. And from here, we can also play around with the contrast by going to your curves adjustment layer. And then we're going to do the same thing, attach it to the bottom layer with a clipping mask, option command G. And then we're just gonna make a little S curve on our curves. And then you can toggle it on and off to see what you just did. And that's gonna give us a little bit more dimension. And now from here on our, we're gonna create a whole new layer called effects or rather group. So I'm just gonna, for the purpose of demonstration, hit your new layer, drag this up above your art layer, your most top layer, and then we're just gonna turn this into its own group by hitting Command G, and we're gonna call this Effects. And this is where we're, we're gonna play around with colors, and we can create color alts and all sorts of fun stuff. So for now, all we gotta do is play around with an adjustment layer called Color Lookup, which which brings us to our LUTs, our preset color adjustments. And we can just kind of go in, play around and see what starts to work. That's pretty cool. And from here, I just want to go clean up around the eyes one more time on that mask. There we go, that looks pretty cool. A little bit better. You can use as much as you want or as little as you want, just subjective once again. And then from here, I just wanna add a little bit of noise by hitting Command plus, I'm gonna call this Noise Layer. And then make sure your mode is on Overlay and you have to hit Fill with Overlay Neutral Color. And that's gonna give us a neutral color overlay. And then from here, we're gonna go up to Filter noise, add noise, and just add noise to kind of make it a little more graphic and blend together. So for this, I think probably 12 is gonna be perfect. And then right below the noise layer, I'm just gonna play around with some gradient maps just so you guys can see that you can make this thing look really, really cool with gradient maps and it's totally graphic, and then you could add type to the top, but you have a really fun poster to play around with now. See, even that, that's pretty cool. But this is how you create a bunch of different alts for your client. You can get them different color schemes. This edgy amber was looking pretty cool, I like that. And then you can always add a little color balance on top to play around with the color even more. If you want it more red, more magenta, it's all up to you. All right, that's looking good. And then the one last thing I wanna do is kinda of pop the eyeballs. And we're going to go to curves in our art folder. And then we're gonna pump the curves up, hit Command I on the mask. And now we can just paint in the eyes, make these a little bit brighter. Make sure we're on the right layer. So that's the layer above the group below and then you can adjust as needed. And the same thing, I'm gonna add some highlights. And now it's just a lot more three-dimensional and a little bit more vibrant and interesting when you add those highlights. So there you go, guys. I hope you guys learned a bunch in this tutorial. I had really a lot of fun making it. Of course, there's a lot of tweaks you could do. You could get the hair to look a little better. You could even add some eye eyelashes, just paint them in, do whatever you gotta do, play around with the colors until you get what you want. 